Hello party people, it is Will Pemble. We are in Miami, Florida, and I am in a Tesla P100D with ludicrous speed, and I'm about to go pick up something even more powerful than that, Shea Robottom. Yeah, cannot wait. Very excited, I'm gonna go get it right now. All right, this is the Tesla. This is a Tesla, it's yeah. not my Tesla. We're oh, rolling. Oh, okay. Right now. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, this is intense. <laughs> I love this. Okay. Okay, so I got this idea in my head, right? Yeah. Because I'm, I've like spent my entire life trying to figure out ways to like f around and get paid. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. So my Tesla's at home. Gotcha. So in you're renting this. Yeah. So I just like. Okay. Okay. I just like found. So it wasn't a road trip. I was like, I think he's going on some sort of road trip. He's gonna pick me up. It's, I don't know. We're on the, I'm on the way to do the road trip, but then I also like just started working with this client where I'm in Sydney for a week out of every month. Oh, so, I'm so jealous. I love a, Sydney. Oh, dude. That's like a that uh, messes you up with the time zone so much, though. When I go, I get on the plane on Monday morning and I get to Sydney at Tuesday night. So, so are you up all Tuesday night, or do you try well, to go to sleep? I sleep a little bit. Uh huh. It's okay. I'm like, I'm, yeah. I can kind of go until it's time to stop. But, uh, but here's the philosophical problem. Uh huh. I go Monday uh -huh. morning. I get there Tuesday night. So if you look at it a certain way, I exist in two places at once. That's true. All day Monday. Isn't that weird? And then when I come home, I leave at 9:40 p.m. Friday night, and I get to San Francisco. 9:30 p.m. Friday night. I cease to be. That is that is cool. That is one <laughs> cool thing about traveling to Sydney. Yeah. This is the hood. This is the neighborhood. Hood. This, these are all yeah, these are all dead ends back right. here is the water. But you could go. No, I'm just gonna, I oh, you're gonna park it? it? I just no. I just want to show you. Oh, you're gonna show. The thing that I'm oh, you're gonna show me something. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, just the one thing, and then like mostly we got. We I need you to show me like about a hundred. Yeah. Oh, can I swear on here? Oh, you want. Okay, good. <laughs> Holy. Holy one. All right. All right. So, do you like fastness? Yeah. Okay. I like thrills and risk. Do you? Okay. A little bit. Yeah. Okay. Let's, see. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. Miami is a great place mm -hmm. for speeding and yeah. revving your engine. Okay. Yeah, it's right. also a place where some people like to go 45 on the freeway. Yeah. So there's a lot of contrast between the lanes on the freeways here. So I you do know. like thrills and surprises. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> oh, that's so good. I want to drive. Can I drive? Oh yeah, you can drive. <laughs> you want to drive right now? Okay, let's do it. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> yeah. I'm putting my that's phone in the just about 800 horsepower. That is wow. ridiculous. Yeah. This is probably the fastest I car I've ever driven. Yeah. Right? Oh, wait, hang on. It's the front desk. Yeah, you can look them up. Thank you. I just got to uh, text Luke because we have a cleaner coming. And, uh, uh, he did a video the other day, which has got me really faster. What, what was the video? He says, is your website an advertisement oh, yeah, for yeah, you yeah, yeah. or for your the industry? industry? I'm like, damn it! I know, right? <laughs> okay, I got so it. now I'm like yelling that to everyone. Oh, wow. Everyone. I'm like, I'm actually moving the seat forward for once. I'm always, I have oh. such long legs. I, I feel like I gotta always back up the seat. Like, even people that are taller than me, I'd be like, you're riding this close? I, oh, sh It's mm -hmm. something happening. Oh, okay. Oh, it's just second. automatic. Okay, yeah. All right, so move up a little bit, okay. and then we're gonna like set it to where it's you. Or, hey, dude, sorry. I know. I know. All right, so I think All this right. is good. I think this. So now you good. push on the brake. Okay. Push on the brake. And then push down, and then just wait. Step what? On the the, how does it just go? Wait. So this is it. Yep. There's no. Is it? Okay, so I'm in drive right now. Yep, you're in drive. Oh, it's very oh, perky. The car. This steering wheel feels nice. I do like the leather. Oh, okay, fact. so it's got to be, it's really one of those, like, it's you got to gas it. Very, well, you saw what happened when we gassed it. Mm -hmm. We did. And, we and we if you want to put your foot in it, that's perfectly fine, okay. but, you know. So it's like, yeah. 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 Ooh. Bentley, okay, I'll kick okay, his okay, ass. Okay. We can kick his ass. Yeah, no, this, this is better than the gun. Yeah. For sure. This is like one of the, one of the. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> 
It's really there. It really doesn't. Okay. You're the first person I've ever met, and I've, I like I believe toys are for sharing, right? So I want everybody to play with yeah, my car. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm like going around and showing people my car, and I'm like, dude, you gotta drive this car. Like, what? I'm not driving your car. Oh, Get in the car. Dude. You're the first person I've ever met. We're like, I want to drive this. I want to feel what it yeah. feels like. All I've right. driven like uh, probably the closest before is. Uh, like a BMW 12 cylinder engine, That's 750 a IL. Hell yeah. yeah I love an ice that, cream. Woo! <laughs> this is like everyone, yeah, this is what that reminds me of. But this one's even better. This one's better. This is, yeah, this is one of the 10 quickest cars in the world, I think. Right, 0 to 60 in 2 seconds. Should okay, go let's go on the freeway. Should we go to the beach, maybe? Let's do a little Miami. We can, we can do it. Right, so we can do whatever you want. I'm just, I'm here for you, man. You're like, I'm not going to see anything. Cool. I'm not going to see anything in Miami that's like... Aw, that's better than Shay. Hello. Dude, I'm telling you, I'm a huge fan. And it, Thank and it's you. First. Thank I'll you for always you supporting first. my work. I well, always appreciate you. You pissed me off a little bit at first because you like, you mentioned things that pissed me off a little bit. And then... Yeah, and then, I do that. But, you know, you're also talented and engaging, and so you, like, you keep my attention after you piss me off, and then I have to think, and, uh, yeah. like, damn it. And I, and I feel like there's, like, there's, I, I imagine yeah. there are some parallels between my adventures and, and yours. Well, that's good, because, you know, I'm always looking to get a reaction out of people. It's not necessarily always a reaction that makes people like me, but, <laughs> um... Yeah, yeah, I had this guy message me the other day, and he said, I love your content, but it's also polarizing. He called me polarizing. I was like, oh. You know, and it kind of, like, forced me to flip this, because I, I feel like I'm always putting out content against polarizing. Yeah. And it kind of flipped my perspective a little, where I was like, am I? You know, and then I was like, well, I make a point, and I make it pretty strongly. I guess it's, it's no doubt going to cause some people to get triggered, but... You know, I think um, I think it was like a cool lesson for me that I was like being called out on my own hypocrisy. Like, hey, you speak about not polarizing and like the right and the left, how it's, we're so intense with our like political views, for example, if right. we're all just part of the problem. That I could that I could actually be doing that same thing in my work, and uh, I had a little reflective moment. My view of you is that you you do live pretty close to the line. Right, your, you know, yeah. edge line, yeah. and that's good and awesome and courageous. Sorry, I keep doing that. I'm not used to this. Like, it, it, it stops so hard. When yeah, you it'll. Uh, well, it, what happens is the the electric motors now they're motors and they're turning the wheels. But when you yeah. let off, when you lift, as race car right, drivers exactly. call it, it's like it's very. Yeah. I'm, I'm not used to that. Yeah. Well, when you lift, the motors turn into generators. They push power back into the battery. So, uh, so it, it kind of that thing works yeah. both ways, and it doesn't work that way in cars because there's no way to get uh, <laughs> hydrocarbons back into yeah. the yeah. liquid state. Look, we're in Miami. This is awesome. Oh my Woo! God! Woo! <laughs> okay. Car in Miami. Like, yeah. Going real slow. There is no car, even in Miami. There is no car that. You're the fastest girl in my head. Power. <laughs> True and more amazing than one. <laughs> yeah. So is that a Bentley? What kind of car is that? I see that everywhere. That's just a charger. That's just a nice car. I don't really know shit about cars. I mean, I'm gonna, like, I like driving and I like going fast. Like, I'm, I'm very, I'm a skater man. I'm a light foot. I get annoyed. But that's just like life. Like I get annoyed at slow walkers. People are sure. walking slow in, in the grocery store. Miami life here, man, there are a lot of people doing flashy things, you know, 
right? I'm learning. You're a St. Louis person, right? You're like no, from I'm from Wisconsin. Wis oh, yeah. say it again. Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> Milwaukee. St. Louis. Yeah, but that's St. St. You're giving me some points there. Say, oh my gosh. St. Louis is a little Say, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what else do you want to do? Yeah. We eat vegetables. Um, when you cheese. When you drink um, uh, a product manufactured by the Coca Cola. Soda. Soda. Okay. Well, who, I mean, who has pop? Most people call it soda. Oh, that's yeah. Minnesota. That's Minnesota. Minnesota will say pop. We still say soda okay. in Milwaukee, but we do what we do that's different in Milwaukee is we say bubbler when we're talking about the drinking cup. Which I always thought was really funny because, uh, you know, in high school I learned that bubbler is actually, it has another meaning. And I don't know what a, the meaning is. It's a pipe, a bubbler, a water pipe. Oh, a bong. Uh, yeah, well, a bubbler, okay. a bubbler is like, it's not a bong, it's like a mini, it has the water in it, like a bong, but it's like a mini, it's like a big oversized pipe. Mm -hmm. It's a bubbler. And then that was funny to me, I'm like, oh, this is what a bubbler is, not the drinking problem. And then, of course, there's like nowhere else in the world that refers to a drinking problem as a bubbler. So it's, it's really weird, but it's funny. This conversation is going nowhere else I thought it was. We, Wisconsin <laughs> is... Wisconsin. <laughs> it is... It's a culture shock moving to Miami, I'll tell you that. You want to hear something so funny yes, from, a mid, from a sheltered Midwest girl? Yes. Like, so... Luke and I, um, we were doing uh, some videos. It was actually outside the uh, at the Cardone Enterprises up in up in Turo. Oh, well yeah, done. Yeah, we worked with the Cardone, so um, we wanted to get a picture. We were with one of the team members, and we were like, "Hey, can we get a picture?" Like me, Luke, and this guy. We were standing outside, with, so we were just saw these two ladies walking by. They were kind of like in their joggers, you know, maybe like going for a power walk. And I just stopped them on the sidewalk. I'm like, hey, would you want to take a picture of us real quick? I had my phone out, had the camera ready, like literally all you. And they said no. They said no. And I, and like, what? it was, of course, of course, every human being has the right to say no and we can set boundaries. I, like, yeah. that's the right. But it was such a shock to me because I'm from Wisconsin. Right. And no one would ever say no to taking a picture on the sidewalk. It was just like, I was like, I didn't know what to do with this information. <laughs> I was like, Luke, they said no. I'm like, can you believe that? Can you believe that? They said no. Oh, man. In Wisconsin, people be jumping. I'll take your picture. Sure. Do you guys want another one? Do you guys want this angle? <laughs> I know. It's like, okay, one more. Whoa. Tell me. I'm yeah. like, but if that's... you ask me to take your picture, we're getting a selfie right. while we're at it. Right? I'm in. I'm 100% on board. But it's, Out. Yeah, it is. It's like, that's, that's really the difference in those Midwest cities. Like, I'm just... And I kind of knew that. I mean, obviously, I've like traveled to New York for work many times and stuff. So I get the mentality there. It's a little more every man for themselves. Nah. It's just the Midwest is more whole. But it is know. funny to me because it's like Does that, now has that happened more than once in Miami. Yeah, I mean, Miami is just like I, I, again, maybe this is Miami. Maybe this is just like a big city thing, and I'm a little sheltered being from a small city. But like, there's uh, awful customer service here. Like, just terrible. Like, and it's just like the standard is like acceptable. Like, things are late, things are not registered correctly, things are, nobody's getting fired. Like, it's just like, well, wow, like, just do the bare minimum and you're good. You know, it's kind of like there's just this overall, like, beach mentality where people are like, everyone's running late. I, I was late recently. Oh, I was okay. late. And I'm, and I, and I, I have had issues with being late in my life. But oh, really? I yeah, but I was late, like a half hour late to this important event in Miami, and the guy that was that was waiting on me when I showed up, I was like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Literally, he goes, What are you apologizing for? I'm like, Only in Miami can you be a half hour what? late? And the person's like, What are you apologizing for? Oh, it's, it's like expected in Miami. Like yeah. people are late. People just they're just it's just like they don't say they don't do what they say they're gonna do. It's it's different here. It's a culture shock. Again, maybe I'm just sheltered yeah. Midwest girl. Maybe it's like this in every major city, but I am like... I'm pathologically on time. Just Are you? Oh, so I was like... You. No, I was late this morning because oh, I'm like okay. wrestling with I GoPros I, in the, oh, in the okay. parking lot because it's like... I know. thought I gave you my number. And no, I was no, 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 I didn't have your number, oh, but... Okay. Uh, and I was th I was thinking to myself, man, look who's so fancy. She's like, won't give me your phone number. No, uh, no I'm not, I'm not <laughs> I mean, I don't just give it out, but I, w I, I meant to give it to you. But no, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm totally like, I think 
I've had this like false fear of being early because when you're early, it, in my mind, it was oh. always like you're wasting time. You know, oh, so okay. I always leave at the last minute to like so I can like you know just one more minute of work in or one more minute, and then I and then I'm inevitably usually like late, yeah, right? I'm like right on time where I'm a few minutes late. That's usually like my range. <laughs> yeah. So I'm learning. I'm I'm shifting. I'm changing my pattern. Well. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I want to be like you because I can t- this pr- this pride you have and like I'm an on time like that's that's where I want to be. I'm a t- I was because I I will usually say to people so like what, my my core values are communication, delegation, time management, teamwork, and hard work. Those are my five core values. Mm-hmm. And if you see me doing anything that doesn't look like at least one of those things, you should talk to me and say, Hey, dude, remember the core values? I'm not seeing any of that right now. And that's good. That's, and I will yeah. that will like reset. It's me. kind of like it's kind of like um, the exercise of always returning to your best self. Yeah. As I just I just read a book about the best self, and they're saying like when you're super like heated, and, like you're like yelling at your spouse, you're just like in that like you're not operating as your best self. Yeah. And if you can create an activity that can return you there, but naturally and like a, like a reflex, um, it's all about mastering the mind. Emotions. I know. It's like Ugh. growing which is, up, which is infuriating. Growing up is a lot more than like fitting into big boy clothes. It's like yeah. learning how to reparent yourself, learning how the brain works, learning how to not be reactive, learning how to meditate and be in the moment so you can enjoy life more. You know what I'm saying? So you have all right. Now I want to ask. I want to ask you some questions. I have. I have like thrown yeah, out the. Questions. I've thrown out the like the plan for this conversation. Okay. Because. <laughs> Oh, I see. I yeah, because there's no managing you, it's so it's, so it's just we're just gonna go with it. Um, but no, I'm ready. Ask me questions. I'm ready. Oh, was that me? Oh, sorry. No. Yeah, I right. that. I want to make sure. You're killing my audio. Change my number back. Oh, that's right. Luke lost his phone this week, um, and we we made it. It was funny because he left it in an Uber on his birthday, and Luke doesn't drink. So we kept joking with everyone, like, it was so wild on his birthday that he lost his phone. Like, he had I don't a, drink. <laughs> you don't drink either? Oh. You guys. I don't drink a lot, really. I mean, I used to be, like, oh. party hard all the I time. I don't like the loopy, I don't like the loopy feeling. Yeah, it's now just is that not, my phone doing shit? Jesus. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's just not good for you. Alcohol is just poison that's basically accepted in society. It's basically what it is really doesn't make you any better. Yeah, it's a solvent. It like yeah. literally dissolves things, like physical things. You pour it on right, something yeah. and it dissolves. Right, and yeah. it, um, it's a puzzle. Yeah, it's a downer. Okay. I had a friend who, uh, she was a, a good friend of mine from middle school, high school. And a, a very like sociable, like me, like smarty, you know, very, very friendly. And like, she said to me once, and I always talk to me, she said, Shay, I won't, Whenever I'm offered a drink and it's like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna drink now, she's like, I ask myself, am I in a good mood right now? Am I a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> this is like important. This is like profound <laughs> wisdom from my friend who like has no college degree or anything. She's just like some girl. But no, this is profound. She was like, I ask myself before I drink, am I happy? Am I in a good mood? Am I a little angry about something? Am I frustrated or am I sad? And she says, if I'm anything but just like happy and oh, that's weird, my son. Oh, what's happening? Oh, let's let's see. okay. Let's just see. What are we doing? Ready? My client called. <laughs> my proposal, but the things have changed. Ever since our first talk, they changed it all. Ever since our first talk, they driving me insane. But my boss keeps on saying, have some patience. Work so hard, keep cracking up vacation. I am a don't try it, you got dedication. They say one thing now, they change, I'm supposed to take it. I can't take it. I'll never leave the office. We're going to yeah. do a re edit of the music video with yeah. clips in the car. Yeah. But I want to play badly. Yeah. I need money, but I'm happy. Yeah. Because these clients always at me. Yeah. My wife's telling me to be happy. Yeah. But it's more than just a bad week. Yeah. Everyone says that the client is important. Yeah, yeah, that don't mean nothing when I do the door, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's just so much pressure, I'm dropping the ball. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I yep. got every client running through my thoughts, man. Yeah,
They got the butts, man. Miami. They got the butts. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of I I what I speculate to be fake butts. Fake butts? Yeah. Oh. Dude, there's like a well, lot you're of, not doing so bad. You're like I'm not. I'm you're not. Doing okay. I got, the, I got the natural Midwest girl, yeah. the hips going on. But really, Miami is very competitive in terms of like beauty and you know there's a lot of like plastic surgery here. There's yeah. a lot of like to shopping and look look good, get blonder, get I, I think like everyone who moves to Miami is just like instantly sexier in like six months. That's what I expect. Well okay. I'm on month four, so I I got some time. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're you're doing just fine. You're Thank you're you. lovely and delightful, I might say. Thank you. So yeah, no, well, there's a thing, you know, it's just like you sort of like, you acclimate, right? That's why we have a house in Connecticut, and I, and uh, it's where the kids were born, and I grew up okay. in New York and all that, but I but okay. I know that if I spend too so much you, time in Connecticut... So you're a New Yorker? I'm a New Yorker, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I know if I spend too much time in Connecticut, I'll, like, exercise less, and I won't go outside, and I'll yeah. get kind of pasty, yeah. because that's just like what everybody does. You just, right. So you, like, you just level, right? Yeah, yeah I think so. Try as I might to yeah. not. Okay. And and it's true, like you know, because my last business from my last agency was in Milwaukee, which does have perks. So I want to know some stuff about that Marvel, okay. right? Yeah, Marvel yeah. Media. You started that? I did. With okay, yeah. I want you. To, I know. All right, uh-huh. I want you to tell me. I want you to tell me like the quick version of the story, and I'm particularly interested in the exit. Yeah. And I have some. Uh, I have some theories. I want you to like help me. Well, you know, there's a lot of things that I won't talk about, you know, <laughs> some some because I, I just simply don't want to, but also mm-hmm. some because I am legally right. advised not to. Right there with you. Um, but, you know, I would say that at first, 
when the idea came about of my exit, mm -hmm. um, I, w I was not happy. Like, it was not necessarily a, a, a happy time. Right. But it was the best choice ever, and I'm glad I, I'm glad I went with it. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, the, the events that may have sparked this weren't necessarily happy events, but I would say, like, it all worked out for the best. It all actually worked out in my favor. So, um, I'm so I'll tell you a similar version of, of my okay. company because I don't know. Yeah, tell me know, about your company. But I I started a company in my uh, Connecticut basement a hundred years ago. Back in uh, back in what my you kids call back, back in what my kids call the 1900s. I okay. started uh, I started a company in my Connecticut basement, and we wanted to just figure out a way to get computers. Okay. And um, so it started in my Connecticut basement. It was a little web hosting company, and it grew to be the 16th biggest web hosting company on earth. Uh, web.com. Oh, wow. So we grew web.com. Web.com. Yes. Web.com. Like internet inspection. Yeah, it was like it was like OG shit. <coughs> okay. So what happened? Um, grew it. <coughs> big. Multi hundred million dollar business, sold it, got a, well, we got acquired, right? And then I got acquired along with the deal. Mm -hmm. And I was like, um, I, I told people that my job title there was like executive vice president of came with the deal. And, and I managed to get myself fired in 19 days. That's how much I loved the new way we were doing things. Really? At web.com. Yeah. There was nothing I wanted more. Then to get the f out of that company once it wasn't my thing anymore. Yeah. Once it yeah. wasn't okay. my because you don't feel it. Yeah. yeah. And then and then and so there's this cookie balance, right? Because you want to grow, you need money to grow, you need people to grow. You sometimes you don't have all the money you need. Blah blah blah. Right. Right. Well, meaning people with lots of money come in. That's very convincing. And then all of a sudden you wonder what the what the hell. Yeah. So that's not yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I'm I'm like pe I'm piecing some of this together from like from like my personal experiences in a number of business conversations, and then uh, and then yeah. just like little little clips and posts you make here. And oh there, yeah, right? for sure. I mean, people are certainly I'm sure filling in the lines, anyways. Uh, yeah. But you know, so what's it, the it, what's the thing? You're a startup girl too right uh, yeah and that might you know I mean once the, once um, something gets big and growing yeah you want I mean to I, on, or? I, uh, I think you just need to be careful who you get into business with you know I think you really need to date before you marry first of all yep. which is a mistake I've made in my life many in more ways than just business you know just being young and naive but also people that value you you know people that see your value and um, respect you, you know, that's like really important. You have to work with people who respect you, treat you as an equal. Um, yeah, and I think that sometimes you can just get thrown into situations where, you know, you think you can trust someone and then it turns out you gave away a little too much of your power and you have to kind of backpedal and, and get it back. But um, like I said, you know, every experience like that if processed correctly and if you get yeah. the tools you need to, to process it you know it usually usually what people will tell you is like something like oh this is like the best thing that ever happened to me you know what I mean like you hear yeah. it all the time like <clears throat> oh, even though this like awfulness where victimhood or I felt you know helpless it's like on the other side of that if you can get through it and I'll admit some humans, yeah. some humans don't but if you can get through it it's usually very beautiful with them. Yeah, very what's the saying that what what doesn't kill you fucks you up for life? <laughs> I'm sorry, that's not the that's not the saying. I'm sorry. Just, yeah, dude, just that thing. is. No, but, uh, I, we, I would love to talk to you sometime when the cameras aren't on because we um because yeah. like again there's yeah. there's like I don't think you could tell me anything. I don't think you could share any idea or feeling or experience um, or rage or any of that stuff that I couldn't like 100 percent. One hundred percent. And it's so fun. So it's, how old are you really? Uh, I'm not hundred. I okay. I'm fifty six. 
Oh, wow. Okay, great. But all year, I thought I was 57. <laughs> so I actually just got a year younger. That's, Luke does that. It fucking pisses me off. He's always saying he's a year older than he is. And I'm like, why are you doing that? He's like, because then when I am that age, it'll be like, I just got a year. And I'm it's like, but you're always, I'm like, I think of it the opposite. I'm like, you're missing. You're, you're 25. You tell everyone you're 26. Like, you're missing out on the year 25 because you're, but anyways, the point I was going to make is, um, I love older people, even though, you know, sometimes I shit on them on LinkedIn, but I do. I, I really respect people that came before me and have more experience because now what I'm seeing is like all those, because you just said like, look shit, there's nothing you could say that like I probably haven't been to or can relate to or feel you on that a little bit. And really what it is is I'm realizing like all the like little corny lessons, like money doesn't buy happiness or like yeah. you can't find fulfillment through a relationship you have to do it through yourself and like all those things you hear like forever yeah but it's like you have at least me i had to go through them i had to go through them like little lessons but then i go to people like you and i'm like i get it yeah. i you get can't it tell anybody I'm, anything right all yeah. you can do is, is like but yeah, I, I, think think some, I think some people you can i think some people a little bit not everyone necessarily has like the rebellious mentality like i do where you kind of are stubborn and like kind of Almost yeah. like have to learn the lessons yourself. But then somebody like you, so so like, so Goal Boss, which is my company, is we're an executive we're an executive coaching firm. We do strategic development. We help you know we help people like get nice. shit done basically. Nice. And it, and it all grew it. Help me get time. my mind right. Yeah, get your mind right. Well, you, well, like you're and what I've discovered is and this and this Luke really helped me put words to this and. Guy, man. Yeah. Wow. And and then and then there's like a whole other oh, there's like a whole other panel there. But anyway, what I've what I've like what Luke gave me permission to be a hundred percent comfortable with, and I've always kind of been a little bit self deprecating about it or played it down a little uh -huh. bit, is there's nobody on the planet Earth who does coaching the way I do it. Not one yes. fing person. And that uniqueness. And I'm not necessarily better at it than everybody else. I think that would be ridiculous to say. But I've got skills and experience and talents that nobody else has. Yeah. I say a thing when I'm when I'm like teaching a class or coaching people or in front of a room full of people and they're like, here's the thing, like because I really do believe that coaching is eighty percent process and twenty percent talent. And so I say to people, look, if you're talented and you're charismatic, you can light up the room and you can do all of that stuff, that's fantastic. And and if you grew up in a profoundly dysfunctional alcoholic home, you've got those skills. But if you weren't lucky enough to have that happen yeah. to you, you're going to have to fall back on, mm. you know, skills and But process. don't you think that those skills only come to some? Well, yeah, they only come to, yeah, for sure. Like, like so, so you can do it. I mean, I can, you know, again, from 100 miles away, yeah. from thousands of miles away, I can tell that you know how to read a room. And... My theory, you know, if you can walk into a room, you know exactly what's what, you yeah. know who's in charge, who's not, how to feel it, how to move the, how to move the people. You can raise and lower emotion. You can dial uh -huh. a room full of people. I have no doubt of that, and I can do it too. And the reason I can do it is when I was a little kid, that was a fucking survival skill. Oh. I had to walk into a room because they were the same people you that I saw yesterday. Yep. But I don't know what. What, what, what it is, right? Yeah. It's like, who's happy, who's they, sad? They're, they're, whatever <laughs> they're dealing with mentally, like, dictates the household. Yeah. yeah. And so, so if you grow up in a dysfunctional home, Which you learn to read the f***ing room, right? Yeah. Because you have to do that to survive. Well, yeah, that, I was going to say to survive, but also to feel loved. Because right, exactly. You, I, you have to, and at least my, for me, heavy, heavy what it was all my life. And now, you know, I'm 26, but I'm just now realizing and, and starting to break break myself down so I can put myself back together essentially is like you always have had this obsession with being like Shay yep. and this is like this is like uh, um, something that I think I actually have been conscious of but just not I didn't have all the information to fully understand where it comes from yeah and now I get it it's like oh dude you were programmed to not only walk into a room and read the room but figure out how how will I get these people in this room to like me is it right. Do I perform for them now? Am I just quiet? Do I blend in? What do I What do I do to just like be accepted and feel love? Because you have that voice there, and you're yeah. like the only way I feel love is by doing I as I am, 
Yeah. Yeah. Have you heard of a Have What's you heard that? of a thing, um, a behavioral assessment called DISC? Have you ever heard yeah, of DISC? Yeah. Yeah. That's like really popular. It's like the most yeah. popular one. It is yeah. the most popular one. You know who invented it? Um. I'll tell you a guy named Bill Marston. Okay. Um, he also invented the lie detector. Oh. Um, and then the really best oh, one of all. Yeah, that's. You know what else he invented? What? So lie detector, disc, behavioral assessment, yeah. most used behavioral assessment on Earth. Take a crazy ass guess of what other thing he might have thought of. Well, he's very into uh, the human psyche and yep. how we all work and we function differently. Yep. Um, Truth, right? Lie detector guy. All right, I'm not going to torture you. The invent judicial system. Nope. <laughs> Wonder Woman. What? Yep. He invented Wonder Woman. The comic. Bill Marston, Wonder Woman comic. Wow. What's Wonder oh, Woman's? What's Wonder Woman's? Uh, her like secret weapon? Her like her boots? The golden light. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Well, OG really Wonder Woman, watched. Linda Carter, Wonder Woman. Yes, gal. Yeah, yeah. 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 I never really watched. Um, okay, Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman had the golden. Lariat. Okay. Right. So she like, like a... for, she like tie you up with the golden lariat and then it forces you to tell the truth. Ooh. Lie detector. Shut up. That yes. is so cool. Yeah, that was her thing. What a cool guy. And a polygamist. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, not you know, not like, not like officially, but he lived with these two women. And yeah. here's my theory about that. Yeah. Tell I'm me. pretty sure it was the women who were the smart ones. Pretty sure. Why? Because they just shared. Them. No, 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 no. No, I'm not talking about the. I'm not talking about like the polyamorous thing. I'm yeah, not talking yeah. about the relationship. I'm talking about the work, the science. Oh, you're saying that the women had a huge influence in his work, and you think the women yeah. were behind a lot of these creations. I just, I just hidden. I just what do they call those that. hidden, uh, hidden figures? Oh yeah, that one. Yeah. Um, but anyway, Wonder Woman. Yeah. Oh, that's really so, interesting. So your disc style, I don't know if you've ever taken a disc style. I took like a fake one online, like a oh, okay. one online. It said I was a, uh, well, what would you guess? You're a high dominance person. You're a high influence person. You're um, a low compliance person, which means you don't give a shit about rules necessarily. And you're probably like medium and steady. That's going to be my guess. What so is it, steady? It measures four things. Um, do you want things to be exactly where they were when you uh, when you left them, right? Uh, I don't know. Do you want to move? Do you want to carry your desk? Do you want to move? There, you know, steadiness. Got confidence. it, got it, okay. Dominance is real simple, do what I say. Influence is what you talk about the most. So you talk about, you know, you want people to like you, you're an influencer um, uh, yeah. online. Right. And, uh, but I'm letting go of that need to be liked. Because yeah. there's definitely people that don't, that don't like me. And I don't make just fluffy vanilla content. Yeah. And I, I don't I'm know. polarizing. Right. Yeah. Well, that, yeah, you're polarizing. It's so <laughs> terrible. <laughs> you know, stir things up. But... But okay, but what, what, what person? Yeah, but what is the type? Because I remember the type that I came back as, but I don't remember like the breakdown. Well, there's like, well, there's, there's the. It measures those those four things: dominance, influence, steadiness, and compliance. So dominance, do what I say. Okay. Influence, I want you to like me. Yeah. And more specifically, yeah. I want you to subscribe to my belief systems. I want you to see it the way I see it, and I want you to feel it the way I feel. Oh, it. yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So. And then and then steadiness, I I want to take the same way to work. Day. No, 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 not at all. You're low steadiness, and then compliance. You know, if it says do not enter, let's let's not go in there because it clearly says right. So rules, you're not rules. Yeah. To me, we're made to be broken. Yeah. So all of those are measured on on a scale of one to. If 100. you want me to do something, yeah. make a rule that I can't do it. Exactly. Like it's like reverse psychology That's right. on myself. We are we are like twins. In you and I. I tell people like on the compliance. No. I tell people. I don't ignore the do not enter sign. I look for the do not enter sign. I want because rule breakers fix things. Rule breakers invent yeah. shit. Thank Steve you. They, we Jobs, put, we push Elon us, Musk. We push us forward. Yeah. You can't build a self-driving car in ten years, said Ford, right. GM, and Chrysler. And Elon said, Yeah, I kind of can because right. he's not. A, he doesn't get shit about the rules. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. I love that. Yeah. Uh, so, the, so what the disc did for me, and I, I took my first disc assessment in August of 2003, and it changed everything because it gave me, without like super crazy deep psychoanalysis things, what it did was it gave me permission to be good at the things I was good at and not worry about being bad at the things 
yeah. is that I, I, I agree. And put some vocabulary and science and understanding to... Yeah, right. I, I, I am a hundred... Right. So you know I'm actually obsessed with personality stuff. So. I didn't oh. say that before because a disc is one that I personally don't have experience with. Okay. I, What's your favorite? Okay, well, I, I, w I wouldn't say I've done enough research to have a favorite. Okay. But at my last agency, what we used to assess people in the hiring process was one called the predictive index. Sure, I know it. You know it. Okay. Yep. So what you described me on disc is basically how I came out on PI. I came yeah. out high dominance, very high, very high um, extroversion, like like top sure. top two percent of extroverted yeah. people. Yeah. And then patience was one that they measured, very low low patience. Yeah, which is kind of compliancy. Yeah, exactly that's exactly what it is. They yeah. say people with a high patience like routine life. They like yeah. you know, we go to their nine to five, like they don't really like unpredictability. What's Luke like? Is he, he is a Z he's, 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 He's but, the same? But Luke is weird. Luke is really <laughs> weird. No, like, I say that with so much love. He knows it. Every personality test he's ever taken, yeah. whoever's facilitating the test is just like, what the fuck? Because his results, they're a lot like mine, but the one thing that's very... That's your water. Thank you. You're, you're a true Uber driver. You can get water. <laughs> <laughs> so... The one thing that's really unique about Luke is I'm an artistic person. You know, I'm a, um, oh, and that was the last factor of the PI detail. I, the lowest on my chart was detail. So I'm not detail oriented. I'm way more artistic. I'm way more free spirited. Right. And Luke is all of those things too, but what what's predictable in an artistic, creative, low detail person, um, what's very predictable about them is that they, that is often accompanied by um, making decisions more based on feelings and a little more ooey gooeyness than logic and black and white thinking and analytical brain. So what's really unique about Luke actually is he'll when he takes these tests he comes out just like me. He comes out dominant, extroverted, impatient, and very artistic, very low. But you don't see but it in real life. But the di uh, it's lower. Well, there's usually some factor on the test that that counters it. So in the PI, it was the E factor, yeah. which tells you your decision making. Luke's E factor was so far to the right, which means logic, that like our investors were actually concerned. They're just like, oh my gosh, this guy is like really black and white, which is very rare to find someone who's very artistic, very creative, but is also so freaking analytical. I mean, it is like, do you know who Ben Shapiro is? Ben no. You don't know Ben Shapiro? He's, like a, he's, like a, he's in the politics. He's conservative. He's very, very skilled debater, very good at arguing, very sharp in his, you know, point. Usually, I don't agree with everything he says, obviously, but I was, I was like, make a joke that being married to Luke is like being married to Ben Shapiro because he's so good at arguing and he's so logical that it's like, how do I even begin to compete? You know, I don't, like, I, it's like he went to law school, but it's really just that his brain is so analytical yeah. that he can't help but see the world through this, um, it's, it's really good, actually. It's great for being a CEO because you're always going to make decisions based on logic. Sure. But it's very weird because he's also super creative and, like, super, like, oh, Shay, I have an idea and it's just the most, like, amazing, like, artsy. But then it's very calculated. And we're going to do the idea. We're going to do, like, do, do, do. So I'm more of, like, a predictable artistic personality. Like, anyone will look at my chart and say, like, okay, she's probably super laid back. She's probably you know, a little more uh, in her feelings than like the analytics. Right. That's like expected, but with Luke, it's very weird. He has both the artistic side and the robotic, analytical, uh, almost like introverted side, yep. you know? Yeah. So Liz is... Is that your wife? She's my Luke, yeah. Uh, she's your Luke. She's my Luke. Liz so, and Luke. Yeah, so, no. I met Liz on June 10th, 1991 at the Haven, which is a club in Connecticut at 10.35 p.m. And oh, I wow. fell in love Very at specific. that moment. Oh, my God. And I was... Maybe you're in a Gun. <laughs> I can get technical, yeah. Um, but, uh, and so we've been together forever. And uh, you know, she's the first person I look for in a crowded room. She is my best friend. Awesome. And so we're having a conversation one time, and we both like Star Trek, which is like, that's that's how I absolutely knew that she was a girl for me. Okay, that's but, how uh, I would know that you weren't the guy for me, probably. Yeah, no, because I'm a like terrible, Star Trek. I'm like an incredible guy. <laughs> but we're talking about, we're talking about Star oh, Trek. What? Star Trek. Star is, Trek. That, is that where, 
Spock is a character? Is that Spock? Is it? I don't know. I'm so... I, I, I don't know. Yes. Okay, okay. Oh, my God. So this, that Spock character... You think you know somebody. So, no, seriously. I don't know. Really <laughs> but no, no, no. The, thank you for reminding me. That Spock character, <laughs> yes. and the way he's talking a little bit, that's what, at our last agency, everyone would joke that Luke was like Spock. Really? Yes. Exactly. Thank you for bringing that up. Okay. That was, they'd call him Spock. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm asking Liz one day. I'm like, hey, what character in... Star Trek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh So I don't know any other characters. And, right. And so she them. goes okay, so there's like so she goes, Well you'd be Captain Kirk, right? So Captain Kirk is like okay. the OG okay. the OG and he's more of medium. He's the captain of the ship. Yeah. He's, okay. No, he's like outgoing and robust oh, yeah. and okay. you know, he's Captain Kirk, he's bigger than life. Okay. William Shatner. Nothing? I don't know. I was born in the nineties, so I don't, yeah. I don't know. Talk to me about the first pretty third album. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you, you know, are you a millennial? Yeah, I'm a millennial. I'm on the, younger, like I'm a, on the younger end. So are you a younger millennial? Yeah, I'm okay. I think it's like, I think it's like '95 is the cutoff or something. Okay, so it's not the point of the thing, not the point of the story. It's like, yeah, but I would be the captain of the ship. That's the point. That's what Liz and I got into. This like, well, I'd be the captain, and I'm like, well, honey, who would you be in Star Trek? And she says, I would be the character who never appeared on screen. And without him, the whole show would be impossible. Totally behind the scenes. Wow. That's kind of like Luke. That's kind of like right? Luke. Yes. Yeah. I'm the, I'm the right? star of the show. Yeah. yeah. Without Liz, I'm a fucking barista. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. I'm likable. And I'm awesome, and I make good coffee. But yeah. that's as far as it goes. Absolutely. If Liz is not in the mix. Yeah, and that's why I love Luke because he's brought that discipline to my life that I don't really feel like I had. Yeah. You know, it was like it was like I've always been ambitious. I've always been a doer. I've always been creative and outgoing. But when it but came, but you've to got the ADD. Yeah, Ooh. and and the shiny object syndrome. Where I'm yeah. like, oh, I'm going to be here. Whereas yeah. everything's so calculated with Luke, you can't, you you really can't exist. Keeps you this, going. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so. what does robot marketing do? What yeah. the hell? What's yeah, your deal? Absolutely. What the hell? What's your deal? So today, in today's age, there's a lot of businesses and just people in general, individuals, businesses, who struggle to basically make content for their social media that's actually going to do it. That's actually going to be effective in reaching their market. That's actually going to be effective in growing followers, moving the needle, that sort of thing. So what we do is we work with these individuals and businesses to come up with a content strategy. And we have multiple routes of doing this. So we have the boot camp, which we sell, which I'll talk a little bit about. It's a six-week LinkedIn video boot camp where you learn everything that you need to know about video marketing, specifically on LinkedIn, how to use it to attract leads for your business. Um, that's a very like um, DIY route. But right. we just really teach you everything we know and then teach you how to go do it yourself. Okay. Um, the other thing that we can do is really hold your hand through, like an agency. And we'll, you know, we come up with all the strategy, all the content ideas, um, figure out who your target market is, obviously, because that's one thing that um, some people struggle to even know. Like, we don't know. Yeah. So... Coming up with content, teaching people how to do content, editing it for them, posting it for them, helping them manage the page, help, helping them manage all the inbound leads, and then also an outbound team to go follow up with all the engagements and potential leads. So it's really like a full, a full service package where you get not only content, but you get the back end to support the leads that are going to come to that from that content. So it's basically you know, create video content that's going to attract your target market and also get your target market to see you as, like, the expert. Like, ah, this person knows. You know, someone might be following me for an unrelated reason. They just like my videos. Maybe they got hooked in one of my funny videos one day. And they didn't necessarily, like, need LinkedIn. Need, they think they need a LinkedIn video. Right. And they're just doing their thing. But then one day... When someone that they're out to eat with is like, man, I really need to like get on LinkedIn. I hear it's popping. I want to do videos. I mean, who do you think they're going to think of? Who do you think they're going to suggest? Me. Because I've 
position myself as the expert to go to for these things. You are. Um, so thank you. So it's not always instant. You know, you have to build for the long term as well. But um, basically, attract your target market, get you seen as an expert, and get people to pick up the phone and do business with you. Bing, bada, boom. And it's, it's crazy because I just think we're not even close to, like, the LinkedIn peak here. Right. Like, we're very, I think, some people are out here saying, like, we got, like, a year before everyone has to pay, or, like, we got six months before no one's going to have any views. It's like, I don't believe that. I believe we got time. I think we're still on the up and up. A lot of more people are joining and starting to wake up, but there's still so few businesses doing content, yeah. at least the correct way. People, this is how I feel about the majority of businesses on LinkedIn. They think content is posting blatant advertisements for their business every day. <laughs> that's, but that's, that's what I was trying to say. Is like, And they're not wrong. You know, They're just guessing. They don't know social media. Maybe they're from your generation or whatever. No offense. But I'm just saying that like, it's not, it's just a different ball game. This is not television. This is not like the cinema. This is social media. And there's a huge disconnect where it's like, businesses either get it and they're thriving or they have no idea, they don't even know where to start, and they're missing out on this massive channel for their business. Well, really, everything that could take them to the next level. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? I'm just kidding. What do you do? Talk about me. Let's talk about you. Yeah. What do you think of me? But it's really fun because it's LinkedIn is it's really inspiring. When so, like, you, I have a theory about LinkedIn is because I think that. I think that uh, you awful millennials. Um, oh, I, awful I'm, I have, I'm the parent of uh, a millennial. So Are you? A special adventure. How old? Is your She's child? 18. She's 18. She just graduated from high school. Oh my gosh. Ellie Pemble. Wow. I Ellie? used to like Ellie. Oh. Ellie Belly. Oh. Jelly Bean. So sweet. I used to dress her up and she'd say, I'm not a doll. I was like, no, you're my action figure. Uh, so, ah, yeah. yeah. She's going to UConn. She wants to be a doctor. See that car over there? That supercar? Ooh. Fuck that supercar. We could Is so it? much faster than that car. That one looks cooler. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. It's McLaren. <laughs> it's McLaren. Like, yeah, it's like a two million dollar car. That's what's up. Very yeah. fancy. But um, but um, but the but um, the millennial kids yeah. don't use Facebook. No. Right. The the, the, the younger. Kids? The, the but now I see the kids coming onto LinkedIn. And I think that they're enjoying it the same way that people enjoyed Facebook yeah. early on. And so, yeah. so, and then there's like guys like guys my age who've been on there. Well, LinkedIn is not Facebook. It's very serious, and blah, blah, blah. and there's all of that. And then, but now, like all of these kids are coming and say, "This is awesome!" Yeah. And, now, and no, so LinkedIn is kind of turning into Facebook in a lot of ways. That's interesting. It is. Turning and you've into got gained Facebook-wise. You really know. What I know you're Facebook doing. very well because, well, and that's what a lot of people don't know about me is. For three years, I was in a cave making content for all of the biggest blogs on Facebook. So I was really a hermit. I didn't do anything. I quit my music. That was sad and like hard for me. I was yeah. very extroverted and like wanted attention. Yeah. And um, and I, I just love creating. I love music. Yeah. So it was like I knew what I was doing was planting the seeds of the future. Um, and then it was like as soon as. Um, Miami driving. Um, yeah, but the point the point is, I spent so long being introverted and testing and creating and curating for other pages for multiple different audiences. Where I I feel like I just picked up this well of knowledge that's like a gold mine because so few people had that unique experience. And what's crazy to me is a lot of the. Um, people that I worked with on Facebook, incredible like blog owners, like just incredible people who understand social, understand how to grow a following, understand how to monetize it. I learned from so yeah. much. And um Talk to me about paid amplification. Paid amplification? Yeah. Well it's a lot better on Facebook uh than LinkedIn. Yeah. Um you still can't sponsor posts on a personal page on LinkedIn. So uh, there's just a lot of kinks that LinkedIn needs to work out, but I believe they are working it out, and I'm I also talk to them weekly now about it, so that's yeah. been good because I get to have a direct line. Hey, this is happening now. Let's fix it. Um, nice. But on Facebook, you can do amazing things with the paid ads and the, and yeah. the paid. I mean, really, you 
can do a, there's so many more options on Facebook and they really have that built out. LinkedIn, um, not, not that you can't do successful safe strategies on LinkedIn, I just think very few have it down, like very few have nailed it. Yeah. So we're gonna see that increase too in the near future. Cool. So on um, so for your services, yeah. Where does that what am I saying? Am I Am I just making awesome content and expecting that it's going to be engaging and viral every now and then, or is there also some like paid strategy so that I've got so that I can move the needle on purpose? Mm-hmm. I'm, not, I'm, not, yeah. I'm not expressing no, myself. No, well. I get it. Um, well, it is about attracting inbound. You know, so you'll you'll get a lot of inbound, yeah. and and we help we you know create the content. We so yeah. like we're not gonna let you write something stupid and put out something that's not gonna go anywhere. Right. Um, but in, in terms of like the pay, the client crazy. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> in terms of the paid, um, I mean it's certainly something that we could explore. I have contacts at least uh, who work on LinkedIn yeah. doing paid ads and they're very good. But really, when you talk about like what's the paid part, where like what are we paying to like attack? I would say the outbound because we still have people managing your inbox doing the outbound messaging and understanding the messaging of the brand and how to approach these people and um, how to interact with them if they were just say a viewer on your profile so you're or build, you're like on your own. You're building connections. And we're building connections. Building yes, connections. That's what we do. Connecting, connecting with relevant people. Right. Connecting with relevant people that could potentially be. Right. Not just so that's what I did. Like when I when I was growing. You know, I'm maxed out now, but when I was growing my connection, I didn't yeah. connect with anyone who, um, well, first of all, they had to have like a build up page activity connection, but also just they had to be like a decision maker. Yeah, I didn't connect with anyone who's like, I'm a nurse. Like, I, yeah. I, I, a few, but like very, it was very calculated. Like, I'm going to build up a network of people that could buy my, could afford my service. Right. <laughs> you know, and I think um, that. There, there is that happening on LinkedIn, but you just have to be a little more calculated, and then, yeah, is that your question? Um, yeah, in a way, I mean, it's, this is like the weird thing, I understand a great many things, mm-hmm. um, I understand computer engineering, I know how to fly airplanes, I know how to teach people how to fly uh-huh. airplanes, uh-huh. I know how to do coaching, wow, build you're stuff. to Luke, I know how to build roller you guys, coasters, he's such buddies, he loves airplanes, he like, oh, he, like, airplanes could, are awesome. he could like fly a plane. Like he has so much he knows. You know, I'm flying second week of August. So we're gonna do a whole week of. Uh, we're gonna do a whole do kind of. I'm gonna tell him. He would freak out because this is what he always says. He does the flight simulator game. Yeah. You know where he flies it, and he's always like, "Shit, I'm not saying it, it would happen. It would never happen. It'd be unlikely. But if for whatever reason yeah. we were on a, the plane, we were on a plane, <laughs> and the pilot and the co-pilot got sick, yeah. he's like, I, I could live. I could land that plane. I'm like, that is, I don't know if I believe him, but he's very passionate about planes. That's cool. Yeah. I was a flight instructor in college. That's how I, that's Dude, how I made money. Dude, yes, you should talk to him. I personally have no interest in flying planes. I don't, I don't think my detail level is. I learned so much about life from learning to fly airplanes. Like, really? I, I, learned, I learned about how immediate the consequences of a seemingly trivial action yeah. Right? Yeah. You can live your whole life well, on around airplanes. All you have to do is not walk into a propeller. Yeah. But you know what? If you don't know that, right. you won't think of that. And you will walk into a fucking propeller and that's it. Yep. So like so it, so there's amazing there's amazing lessons in aviation. The other lesson I learned yeah. in aviation is the last thing you want to do is uh, be a bus driver for a living. Really? Because you just you know, you just drive people. And most people would rather flying not felt like flying. Oh, yeah. So Learn a lot from flying. Flying is awesome. Lots of fun. Don't worry. Yeah. Well, it's a beautiful thing. and it's actually, it's funny you bring up the pilot job because um, when we used the PI at my last agency, we studied some like certain jobs and what factor needed to be the highest for that job, preferably yeah. the highest. You know, there's always like exceptions. Mm-hmm. But it was actually the detail for pilots. They said pilot, yeah. pilots need to have the highest level of detail because yeah. it's not necessarily about having a big ego and like, well, like, I can fly this plane. It's really about, can you follow instructions? Right. Can you listen to the, what are they called? The Air traffic control. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And then follow accordingly because you have to be so precise and on that. So that's why I say like, I have no interest in flying yeah. a plane because I struggle to do things like that. Like I, 
I don't like being put in like situations with a lot of detail and an organization. So, yeah. um, but Luke can do it. Yeah. And we never finished talking about this. So oh. the the part the the actual name of the one that I am is like the. Well, you're so the, there's no like one person. There's no like one name, but you're. But I what what I thought there are. I thought it's like. I'm well, there's an, dominance, I'm, influence, steadiness, compliance. There's those four. Bunches. I mean, you're probably. I'm whatever. Probably, I'm whatever Will Smith is. That's what the the free test oh, yeah? told me. It's nice. like Will Smith, and there's well, a couple other artistic people that have this type, and they were like, "You're like this type." I was like, "That makes sense." Yeah. It was like it was like very, very extroverted again, and mm-hmm. very like kind of like happy. I want to say like kind of like bubbly, yeah, but, excited. Well, that's the have that's done, the influence oriented. Have, have you done the Enneagram? Enneagram? It's like an old, no. ancient No, I haven't, I haven't done that. Okay. You know that that's my logo? Is it? I like it. Is it a guy with glasses? It is. Ah, it is. Okay. My company name is Gold Boss. Ah. So, they, so uh, the guy who made the logo says, well, it's a G, it'll be, and then that's you. Because I love this oh. I like the glasses. Yeah. They look like they fit your head really well. They're good. They're... they're they're Oakleys. I wore sports glasses all my life, you know, for cycling and stuff. So these are the only ones that I won't destroy. Like, grown up glasses, I, they won't be on. But anyway, so that so I'll send you a link and you can take like a real, a real, like a gold boss disc assessment. Yeah, real, no, uh, I'd love to. Because I, I am a student of that. Like a free one, but. Yeah, we'll get um, to the, we'll get to like the like baller like version. But the PI is. The PI is too. good. I what love, I like I about the disc, PI. as opposed to yeah. all of the others, is that it's it's all about what you do. It's behavior. It's not intellect. It's not. The PI uh, is behavior. The PI is, is similar, um, and I'm just I'm just like this is the yeah. no it is it's the OG assessment. So that's why I love it. Yeah, it's truly funny too because I have this heavy interest in like mental health and child psychology and how, yeah. how we develop. It's just so funny to me that like these personality tests have become uh, useful and accepted in business and in the professional world. Um, but like, I actually think they'd be way more beneficial for families. Families and therapy. Like, you have two children, okay? One's this way, one's this way, and like you're you have the same parenting style for both. Right. Which can be, I, I, I do think that um, consistency is really important when it comes to parenting. So there's, Yeah, there's, but not but, but communication. The, yeah, the point is, people don't even know how to raise their own kids because they're not aware of like their tendencies. And these tests would really help families in therapy, or, or couples in therapy, marriage counseling. You know, he's this Absolutely. way, you're this way. This is why you guys always clash here. you got to figure it out. Like, when, when you're just made aware of these things, it actually becomes a lot less about like, you versus me, and it just becomes, oh, you you prefer this way, I prefer, this is your tendency, this is mine, how do we coexist? And then you kind of have a starting point that's not based in, like, well, who's right, who's wrong, yep. you know? So when we I'll do, have, so when oh, we right. do a disc assessment with... Or no, yeah, that is... What? Wait. What? What are you there's a, pointing there's a, at? There's a building. The bicycle. There's a the building that looks like a guitar. Bridge. The guitar. The that they're building. I think they were coming up on it, but I'm not sure. So I got nervous. Keep talking. We'll see. We'll see. We'll get closer. Okay. Squirrel. Sorry. I didn't know. Squirrel. Yeah. Okay. I'm with you. Okay. So what we come out of the other end of the distance as we're in, because like, whenever I learn a piece of information, I either want to know now what or so what. That's what I want to know. So like. Tell me something interesting that's fun, but then also tell me why it matters and what to do about it. So, with DISC, we're all about the now what. So, if you take a DISC assessment, one of the things that one of the things that we're going to come out of it with is we're going to come out of it with your communication views and don'ts. And so you'll have a list of things that you'll be able to articulate. So, like if I want to talk to you about an idea, I'm probably not going to get super deep into the details. Right? I'm going to like tell you, check, we're going to do this thing, it's going to be awesome, it's going to be big, it's a building shaped like a guitar. And then, if I got you, see, ooh, right? And then, you're going to ask me for details if you want them, but I'm not going to bog you down with the details. Okay. Right? So, but a lot of people don't know this. Most people, like high 90s percentage of people, don't know this about themselves. They think, like the golden rule, treat others the way you would want to be treated. 
if I communicate to you, I mean, you and I are similar, so if I communicate to you the way I would want to be communicated to, it's probably going to work out fine. Yeah. But if I communicate to my accountant, you know, right. Peggy, there's going to be this great thing. She's Peggy. like, wait, to Peggy Holmes. Um, Look her up on LinkedIn. Peggy the, Peggy the accountant. Connect. She's awesome. But, um, Peggy keeps me out of jail. So, but if I go to Peggy, I'm going to say, they are Peggy, I have some data. Yeah. I've gone through these numbers. Okay. I'd like you to go through these numbers, and I'd like to begin a conversation so that we can figure out what the end will be. And maybe we decide that a building shape like a guitar is the way to go. But Peggy can't start at the end. You and I, Princess Bride, will skip to the end. Right. That's yeah. what we want. Yeah. Um, so what? So what yeah. the what the disc assessment. What the disk report, our disk report does, is it gives you like a list of 10 communication do's, how to light you up, how to get your attention, and communication don'ts, how to shut you down, how to piss you off, how to bore you. Woo! Punch it! Yeah. Woo! Okay. Right? So we, get, so we get communication do's and don'ts. And then what you can do is you can say to anyone you meet or know, hey, nice to meet you. These are my communication do's and don'ts. Okay. Do you want to talk to so yeah, like so yeah. at our clients, right? I like that. Yeah. At at our boundaries. Yeah, boundaries. at boundaries. So how to get what you want from me, right? It should be in like a T shirt. And um, so all of our clients, we put name tags on the doors and on the cubicles. Okay. Like I'm Will. I'm a high dominance, high influence person. Yeah. Be brief, be bright, be gone, yeah. right? Don't bog me down with details. Don't talk don't, down to don't me. Don't tell me what to do. Yeah, don't tell me what don't to tell do. Don't tell me what yeah. I'm going to do. Take time for personal talk. Ask me about my weekend. Yeah. Those those kinds of things. So when somebody comes to my... Narcissizing. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a word? I like it. <laughs> I've made up lots of terms. Yep. But but you're right. It's the, app, it's the ultimate way to succeed in the relationship. Now, what imagine, okay, so go back to Marvel right. Media, right? You have like 30, 40 people there. Yeah, right? at one time it was a lot. Yeah. yeah, so now, so imagine an organization, and at Web.com we had like a boatload of people. Hell yeah, I can imagine. Every place you go, every office you go to, it's like, oh, here's Corey's office. All right, Corey is a high compliance, high status yeah. oriented yeah. person. Yeah. I'm going to move him yeah. slowly. I'm going to maintain right. some space between me and him. And there's like a list of how to communicate with me on the door, so that if I've never met you before, I can communicate to you in a way that you would want me to communicate to you. This is magical, right? Yeah, but, yeah, but it, it really saves you time. It yeah. really will save you time in finding the personality types you're looking for. Um, and you know what else I thought was really interesting? No. Because we didn't just do the personality assessment, we also did an IQ test. Mm-hmm. Oh. And, um, Really, the best employees were not the smartest. You can have it a, was. It was really like the people that came out like genius level, like oh, we gotta have this guy. He's brilliant. We're like not no. not good employee. Not, I, not, I mean, and again, there's exceptions there too. But I would say in general, the people who were like um, intelligent, just not like hyper intelligent, like above average, like intelligent present people, right? Yeah. Those were the best employees. The ones that it was like once you get like to a certain level of intelligence. Yeah. It's like they're awesome, awesome insight. It's I, not, it's I never tell my kids they're smart because smart Dad of the year. smart doesn't get you there. Smart makes it easy for you to like blow through your homework. Smart makes it easy for you to come up with the answer first. But you when you get to, when you get to college or you get into the workforce, everybody's smart. It's yeah. not the smart people who win, it's the hardworking people. I I say I say this as like hardworking people, it's the people without limiting beliefs. Yeah. yeah, I'll go one step further. Like, generally speaking, the richest, most successful, objectively most successful people I've met are not very smart. Thank you. They Thank work you. their fucking ass off. Right. Though. They are the hardest working people. They work. They work their ass off, but they believe they can do it. Yeah. They work several, their ass off. There's right. several people who are. And that's the other thing that smartness gets you is limiting beliefs because you can. You can like iterate a million different possibilities, a million different ways that something could go wrong, it all of these possible alternate realities, and only one of them is successful. Right. If you're, you know, too smart for your own good, is the saying. It's really true. Like, so yeah, smart. I, I have. I do not value And it's smartness. correlated with depression too. Like yeah. smarter people are depressed. Because yeah, because you know too much. Yeah, exactly. It's like ignorance is bliss. 
but uh man you're killing me because it's so true about the limiting beliefs like a lot of work that i've been doing is like well but they they do come from somewhere i don't think it's just like oh your intelligence you're going to pick up limiting beliefs i think it comes from your childhood it comes from the, the things you were exposed to the trauma that never got healed or, or the energy is still in you somewhere yeah. and it manifests in like not feeling yep. worthy and not feeling deserving but not on a conscious level so that's the thing people will complain about their life all day but it's all external factors it's like oh can you believe you know i just i didn't get pr- promoted with that other woman she's a bitch whatever like, it's always like external yeah it's never like i don't believe i'm deserving of this promotion so i'm gonna find a way to sabotage it and ultimately cause that girl to get the top spot because then it's like people don't think like that they think like it's an extrinsic they're mm-hmm. victims and really what it is is you're a victim of your own mind you don't believe you are worthy deep down but if someone would have asked you like to your face well do you think that you're worthy do you think you're deserving you would have answered of course i do what are you talking about i mean literally my whole life until recently if someone would ask me that i would have been like of course, yeah, like, of course well, i am i'm gonna have an awesome life but right. it really wasn't and then back here it's like but there's a lot of really important people who wouldn't agree with <laughs> Yeah, and that's what it is. You know, we're yeah. told by our parents, yes. teachers, family, like, but thug life, we're, right? You know, the hate you give. We're told in a direct or an indirect way, you're not good enough as you are. You have to be liked to be valued. You have to do something to be of value. You can't just be. And that's the root of this limiting belief. I'm not worthy. I'm not deserving. I'm just not good enough because I'm not enough. And that's really what people believe, and they're unaware that they believe it, yeah. and it's killing us on a mass level. It's literally the root. The root. The root of all evil is not the things on the surface that we think they are. It's really just we don't love ourselves. Like that's it. That's yeah. it. If we just like could perfectly raise the next generation of children to have healthy self-esteem, to love themselves, to know that them as they are just being is whole and enough. They don't need to be a straight A student. They don't need to be pro athlete to be enough they are enough all the issues in humanity would just be eradicated because we wouldn't be toxic and if you look at the way we operate in society we're toxic we are destroying each other we destroy the earth we you know do things like make drugs illegal like that fixes anything like no people yeah. do drugs because they're traumatized like we you know what I mean we're, yeah. we're actually so shallow and unintelligent yeah and you laughable. treat drug addiction like a crime instead of a disease exactly it's laughable Brilliant. like I really think 100 200 years from now hopefully sooner because I'd love to see a lot of these changes take, take place in my lifetime but like I really think we're going to look back at this time like we were cavemen like we no were doubt. absolute cavemen yeah. we had no idea what we were doing we were not raising our children properly we were toxic with the marriage um and and the way that society was structured was really it kept everyone like busy and mm-hmm. occupied that like it took us so long to like kind of wake up to the truth <laughs> like what, what like what's the goal here like for the economy to be strong like what are we doing like what is the end all be all like we haven't gotten there yet as humans we haven't evolved no 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 we're still we're still like focused on survival yeah, so. and 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 more specifically, the survival of the individual. Like we're not we're not focused yeah. on survival of the human race. Let's all unite. Let's all make sure these kids in Africa got dinner tonight. No, no, no. It's like survival. Like I I want to win. Yeah, I want to get to the one yeah. percent. Screw everyone else. I'm in Miami. Every man for himself. The itch. <laughs> yeah. So I won't take your picture. <laughs> I'm not taking your fucking picture. Come oh, on. What the on. hell is that? Yeah. It was so funny too. She was like. No. I was like, oh, damn, she was a daddy. <laughs> like, she was, it wasn't even like she was like, no, we're in a hurry, I'm sorry, like, we gotta run. It was just like, no. But again, okay. like, totally respected. Every oh. human has the right. It's just, yeah, whatever. I, somebody I asked you to take funny. the picture, you take the picture. I just thought it was, I was like, oh my gosh. You take the picture if somebody asks. You know, it's that's sad. a thing. You know what's sad, too, is no one else walked by, so we had to do this. <laughs> we had to do the timer. Is it? Okay, car. ready? Yeah, I love self timer pictures. You can she was always. My one hope. Uh, they were my one hope. Those yep, women. They, they let me down. So but, sad. Yeah. That's terrible. Okay, so the, we're gonna. So here's the wrap up, right? Yeah. Here's what I want to know, and this is like the way we do every goal boss conversation ever. What I want to know at the end of the conversation is like, what are your key to your key takeaways from the talk today? So like, we've talked about some stuff. Key takeaways. What are they? <sighs> you know. 
I was having a really rough morning. This is like, you're going to be like, shit, this has nothing to do with what we talked about in the car, but it is a takeaway. It's because I was having a really rough morning, um, and my life coach, one of the people, one of the like healers I'm working with, was saying how like, wherever you give your energy, whatever you give your energy to, like that's what will manifest. And right now, Shay, you have this, like, really negative pattern in your life, you know, that is in your life, so it's hard to break. But he's like, you have this, like, negative pattern of giving your energy to the bad things that happen. Like, something, like, occurs, and, like, I'm reactive. You know, I'm like, I, I gotta react to this. I'm like, my day is affected. I'm, I'm depressed. You know, I'm sad now. And he was kind of giving me all these, like, exercises, like, on how to basically hack your brain. How to hack your brain to be like, why am I giving energy to this? Like, yes, it happened, accept it, move on. And uh, it was various exercises, like, you know, um, the, even, you know, just simple things, like go get a cup of coffee with someone, or go like to change your energy, go get a, get a fix. And uh, it's funny because that's, I was, I was in that place this morning, and then I was also frustrated with his advice because I just kind of felt like, it's just draining when you've been like working on yourself your whole life <laughs> and uh, you're still depressed you know what I mean so yeah. it's like there's always this like doubt like am I just doomed to be sad and like I'm never going to heal like am I just you know because that's how it feels when you've been at it for years and like it's you're still uncovering shit you're still you're still not fully healed so all that said that's where I was at and he's like giving me this exercise and I'm like eh. but then it was like time to meet you yeah and literally like as soon as I met you and as soon as we hugged and that energy was exchanged I was like okay I feel better and now this whole car ride I'm like you know what I'm gonna be okay life's gonna be okay life's gonna be okay yeah because it is because it's exactly what he said I went in a new environment with my new friend Will and I got to drive a Tesla like how cool to talk about changing your mind yeah it's like okay now I'm in a new spot and it works, is what I'm saying. I've learned that, like, this really does work, but my brain is a muscle. I just haven't exercised this specific part enough yet. That's what's contributing to my depression. That's what's contributing to my lack of, um, the lack of growing at the level I would like to in my business. And I am one today, because if you will, I am one step closer to conquering and being a master of my mind. Well, right back at you. Aww. You're, you're good, though. You're good. I'm going to catch up. <laughs> Yay! Okay, Shay Rodham, thank you for being here. Yes, thank you for having me. I'm going to park right here. We're going to get food. Okay, cool. Awesome. Thank you for helping us bring coaching and leadership to teams everywhere. I am Will Pemble. I'm Shay Rodham. We'll see you soon.